Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Jimmy Jones. Oh, yeah. Where's that box of tissues? It's right here. <laughs> That's unfair playing that song. I still get all choked up when I go see a CMU game and they play that. You know, they play that right before we come out, and that's a tremendous uh, memory of mine. Durrani Pitts, I want to thank you for that speech. I have uh, three grandchildren over here that heard that, and it was tremendous. And you're a great role model for them. Thank you. I had two speeches written, a long one, and then uh, I lost the other paper, so I'm just going to win this. Uh, Danny Jones, my big brother. He's not bigger than me anymore after the last couple years, but my athletic career started back in the early 60s when I was dragged along with my father and my uncle Phil and my other uncles, and we'd go watch Danny play at Arthur Hill in the early 60s under High Becker, and he was my childhood hero, my older brother. And uh, he was a little bit different football player than I was. He weighed 195 pounds. He had legs like tree trunks. Mine are like twigs. I had to have tape to hold up my socks. And Mr. Donahue said, I was a skinny kid. He would run over you. I would run away from you. But no, he was my childhood hero, and uh, I wanted to emulate him, and I you know, I can remember looking at my dads and my uncles and how excited they got, you know, watching him play. And I wanted that same excitement to translate to me. And I think my parents are pretty proud of me right now. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of other people I have to thank here tonight. The coaches. Um, coach Bakari was my first uh, football coach on an 1100 flag football team. And... Uh, I can remember he put me in at right guard, lineman position, my first practice. He didn't know who I was. And I rode there with Rusty Furlow on a bike over to Art Hills practice field. He put me in at right guard. I can remember the first couple of plays. My face was down in the dirt. And I thought to myself, this football thing's not very much fun. <laughs> and uh, that didn't last too long. At the end of practice, we had wind sprints. He made us run around the track at Arthur Hill. And I beat everybody, not by a little bit, but a lot. So I didn't want to be a lineman. And I got back there first, and he'd say, what's your name, son? And I said, Jimmy Jones. Well, it's, that's where it started, you know, as an offensive back. And, uh, you know, Coach Picard, that was uh, a lot of great memories. And uh, he coached the Pickles for many years, and that was one of the best uh, flag football teams in the city at the time. The next man I'd like to mention and thank is, uh, without these coaches in my life, I'm not standing up here talking to you. It's Mr. Donahue. Mr. Donahue, if I can, one word is relentless. He would grab me and pull me back this way and send me down the road of, of being an athlete rather than this other road of being a non-athlete. And he worked with me seventh and eighth and ninth grade like, like nobody else. And I, I really admire the man for what he's done for me in my life. He not only was my coach, but he was very instrumental in getting my first teaching job. And that was one of my dreams, is to become a teacher and a coach, just like he was. I wanted to be just like Mr. Donahue as a young man. I wanted to be able to help people and coach people and teach people. And uh, I love you, Mr. Donahue, and you've been a lot to me all my life. So I just want everybody in this room to know that. George Eiler was another coach of mine. And, you know, when I think of George, it's hard to believe you only coached me for two months of my life. I've spent the last 40 years getting to know the man. He's been a tremendous mentor to me professionally, and I'm proud to call him a friend. Um, Coach Yuri, you've also done the same thing for me professionally. You've been a tremendous mentor for me. And Saginaw, I was very lucky to have you three. Um, one of the best decisions I ever made in my life was to go to Central Michigan and play football. You know, what can you say when you, you know, the three coaches I just talked about, you talk about coaches at, our, or at Central, what name, Roy Kramer, Herb Durami. They're Hall of Fame coaches, every one of them. And, uh, you know, I can remember in the, in the spring of 72, I made two decisions. One was to go to Central and play there. And there's, there's a man there that is probably as responsible for me standing up here, and that's Coach Denny Swenson. You saw him on the tape there. He's got this accent. He's got this way about him that... Uh, 
He knew what to do to me to push my buttons and to motivate me. Now, I've never had a coach like that before. And uh, he would push me beyond my comfort zone. And uh, he had that southern accent. He, and during a game, he, would, he was always up in a press box, so he knew what he, I knew that he knew what it was doing. And he had this tendency to occasionally to ask for me to get on the phone, and he'd say, Jones, I think that number 86 is a little tougher than you. What do you think? You haven't even introduced yourself to him. And I spent the next three quarters beating the snot out of that kid. <laughs> and, you know, that's how I played because of him. It was, I never feared you. I wanted, to, I wanted to beat the snot out of you just to prove that, you know, I was tough. Coach Swenson demanded perfection. He never let you walk on the field. You kept your helmet on in the entire practice, the entire game. The games we played in were easy compared to the practices. We had a conditioning program at the end of the practice, five minutes. If you could live through that, you could live through anything. And I really respect Coach Swenson, and he's not here tonight, but uh, I'll tell you what kind of coach he was. He flew up here from Houston, Texas for 15 minutes to take that. That's, that I haven't, I've seen him a couple times in my life since then. That's a tremendous uh, coach. And I have tremendous respect for him. He can't be here tonight because of an illness. He was gonna fly back up here for this induction. And, uh, you know, one real quick mention, the second best decision I made was to marry that woman. Right. That, was, that wasn't my second best, it was my best. And Jay Brooks, I still got this key ring right here. He says that he put my wife and I together when we were in high school. Well, I have this key ring with her picture on it, and I still have it after 40 years. And what you did for me, I appreciate it. And Bonnie Rummel, I love you, man. So I guess I got to get off this podium, but uh, uh, I could I could stay up here another hour and tell you the people that I uh, uh, have been influenced in my life. And uh, this is quite an honor for me, and I am really thrilled to go into the Saginaw County Hall of Fame. And congratulations to the other inductees this year. Um, thank you.